Okay, everybody, welcome to the February feels like April weather <laughs> steering committee, but it is just February. Next month we will be in person. Um, so welcome to everyone. I really appreciate everyone being here. And uh, we're gonna dive right in to our agenda. Um, I might mix something uh, up a little bit so that we can um, fit in. Uh, Mary has to leave a little bit early. So um, this, uh, this month, we're just gonna cover a couple of things, a really important topic. And thank you, Councilwoman, for being here to talk through your survey. Um, as you all know, um, we don't really keep written minutes right now. We are recording these and uploading them to the YouTube channel. So uh, I'm assuming that is that works for everyone who wants to catch up. Um, and it's a good way to keep the history of the committee. Um, I'm going to um, ask for, see if uh, anyone else is here. Councilwoman, I'm going to ask you to wait with your updates to put them in with your, your presentation. And I do not see anybody else here from any of the other council offices that overlap with their steering committee uh, member boundaries. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask for updates from Nick and I don't see Jeremy and I know Richard has an update. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Well, thank you. Um, appreciate the time, Lou. Uh, a couple of things we would like for you to know, this is really a time of year when uh, our organization is is gearing up for um, really the, I'll call it the growing season. I sound like I'm in agriculture, don't I? Um, we, you know, we really are going to be putting a significant investment into the landscape this year, as we did last year, but this year um, it'll even be more impressive uh, what you'll see in terms of uh, the commitment we make to um, the plantings in and around the district. It's also the time of year when uh, we're gearing up for the planning of our summer events. Uh, it's been interesting. Our phone has been ringing because organizations have seen the success that others have been able to enjoy by using Fillmore. And um, we're not going to announce anything specific tonight because we've got to get some contracts signed, but it's just been fun to talk to some organizations that we haven't typically have had contact with who want to do events on Fillmore. And so as those come to fruition and we get those across the finish line, uh, we'll be anxious to tell you just exactly who's going to join us and uh, what we're doing. But uh, really all the effort in, in our office right now is about gearing up for uh, second, third, and even fourth quarter, if you can believe that. So Rich, I'll, let, I'll throw it to you. Yeah, um, just to piggyback on that update for the group on the quality Italian expanded patio structure. Um, today is a deadline for them to get their application in. So I did reach out to the city to find out if they've applied to keep the permit um, active. And I'm just waiting to hear back from Justin Rinaldi, um, who's running that program from the city side. So as soon as I hear back from him, I will send an email out to you, Lou, to let you know if they've applied. Um, at this point, I haven't seen anything. So um, I will update more when we get the information. Great, thanks. And if you find out in the next day or so, I'll update this group um, just with a quick update. I know that has been um, a really problematic situation for many. So uh, we've, we've continued to dog it. And um, I do not see Annette Woodward, uh, who is a Cherry Creek North representative on this committee, um, who has been uh, probably the most vocal in really, really following that and, and serving on the, um, and looking at the rules for outdoor below curb um, use. So uh, we all think it doesn't, wouldn't apply. So I'm hoping they'll just capitulate on that and we won't have further issues. Yeah, and clearly maybe, doesn't meet those new standards. Yeah. Rich, do you want so, to talk about the lights? Oh yeah, I guess I'll update everybody. So the lights are up in the trees for now, but um, with daylight savings changing, March 10th is the uh, turn off date for those. So those will be turned off on March 10th and come out of the trees immediately as we'll start seeing you know buds on our trees with the early spring, it seems. So that's just right around the corner and that will be be happening. So uh, we'll keep them up to the 10th and we'll uh, then just get them down as quick as we can to get ready for planting season. And if you would talk about the medium uh, that... Oh, that's, a, that's kind of important. 
Yes, yeah, so we'll touch on this. So we did get the IJ across the finish line for the median. So we have the median on First Avenue, right, from University up to Steel. So we've already had a crew go in there and just clean it up at this point. Um, it just wasn't desperate need to, it was overgrown. So you will notice that everything's been cut down and trimmed back and it's cleaned up. Um, we also have the, what I call Triangle Park, which is the uh, median where the orange piece of artwork is between University and Josephine. Um, on first and between first and second. So we've also acquired that piece to take care of. So that's been trimmed down and we should hopefully get a good, uh, you know, spring growth in there now that we've trimmed things back as, as they should have been. And um, we're going to be partnering with the mall for the care and maintenance of the median between the mall and us. So more to come on that, but we're going to look at um, what's out there, try to get some pavers fixed, get some ballers fixed and just try to invest what we can um, out there to, to spruce that area up. Great. And this is the first time, I think, that you all are taking care of the Triangle Park. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. First time we've taken the Triangle under our wing. And we just thought, especially the end cap, really needed some work. And um, there's some trees that need to get replaced out there. And it was um, pretty evident that we just, just had to get it done. So um, we're excited to take care of that and be able to bring it up to the standards that the community expects. Well, we're thrilled for that. So thank you as we thank the bid over and over for safety and for lights and for um, the beautiful landscaping. And we'll look forward to having that really be a much better uh, little contribution to the greenery in the neighborhood. So uh, thank you for that. I also want to do a shout out to thank Christine Desenfant, who was um, kind enough to present to the Cherry Creek North Neighborhood Association on uh, developments in the neighborhood. And so she did a great job, was well-received uh, walking the dogs the next day. Somebody stopped and said, hey, that that lady was really terrific last night. <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you, Christine, for doing that. And uh, we thank all of our developers, Amy included, for continuing to come back and over and over and and present to, um, to Cherry Creek and to the steering committee. So. Um, anyway, thank you for that. I'd like to move on uh, just quickly, and we only have 17 people. Um, I had asked for folks to sort of reaffirm um, their service on this committee, and get, we have some new people here, and um, I am going to call them out as I see them, and actually maybe we'll just go around a little bit and just allow other than uh, the, the folks that wear the big hats like Richard and uh, Councilwoman Sawyer and uh, our uh, Nick and, and Amy, I'm just gonna ask the folks that um, are serving to please just introduce themselves. I'm gonna start with you, Mary. Well, thanks, Lou. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Morissette and I represent the Hilltop Neighborhood Association. And the reason I'm leaving early this evening is that we're having a joint Hilltop Bellevue Hill Neighborhood Association meeting on the redevelopment of the 9th and Colorado, or I'm sorry, the 9th and Claremont VA site. There's uh, a lot of really great proposed planning that's going on there for adaptive reuse of a portion of that site. And um, I'll have more to report on that later, but it is going to be a great update and addition and amenities to our uh, collective neighborhood, collective uh, Central Denver. So anyway, thanks, Lou. And Mary has been on this committee for longer than I have, I think, actually. I think five five years, uh, 2019, maybe. No, probably before that, because yeah, I think that sounds too close to COVID. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was the old days when we actually used to meet in person, in at, person the, uh, yeah. at the former Gart building. So, um, so, so Mary happy has we're doing that, getting together she, again. Yeah, she's an architect, um, as you can see by the nomenclature after her name, and a good one, and is um, a really valued member of this committee. So, uh, thanks for continuing to stay on. Um, your cohort you. is not here. Um, so, in fact, we haven't we have a pretty low number. We only have seventeen tonight. So, um, but I'm going to introduce um, Tracy Winchester, who is new and is Cherry Creek East. So, welcome, welcome, Tracy. Well, thank you, Lou. Um, I'd like to say that I'm just repurposed here. Um, I actually was on uh, the Cherry Creek Steering Committee. I had to look at my resume to find out when, 
but between uh, 2013 and for uh, the Cherry Creek East Association Board during that time. So that's why I was there. And, um, and it's good to be back, uh, honestly. Um, but I, I really haven't, I don't feel new. I just feel repurposed. <laughs> so uh, thanks for having me back. And your most recent position was? Well, um, I was actually working for the mayor, the current mayor, for a hot minute for about two or three months. But prior to that, for two for about two and a half years, I was working for High Councilwoman Sawyer, was working for uh, Mayor Hancock. And so I ran into Councilwoman Sawyer quite a bit in the hallways and other places after COVID. So uh, yeah, so, and, uh, and Bill James, I wanna give a shout out to you, Bill. Nice to see you again, it's been a while. So anyways, thanks, Lou. Oh, welcome, welcome. And also Cherry Creek East, Bill Tanner is here. He's, um, Bill, I'm gonna turn it over to you to say hi and uh, reintroduce yourself or introduce yourself to some of our new members. You're muted, Bill. Hmm. Okay, got it. So, uh, yeah, always glad to be uh, uh, attending the uh, Cherry Creek Steering Committee and listening to what's going on. A uh, great opportunity to to hear about uh, all the things going on in the area. Yes, uh, very, very uh, interesting. Uh, for a number of years, I've worked in uh, Cherry Creek East on the Development Committee, um, you know, looking at uh, putting together agreements with the developers as uh, new projects have started, and of course our pace is thankfully a lot slower than it is in Cherry Creek North. Um, and uh, you know, I want to recognize Lou for the help she's provided and uh, thought she's provided over time about how to uh, construct uh, agreements uh, effectively. Um, you know, other than that, uh, uh, just a retiree. Uh, you know, happily living in the area. Thanks, Bill. We're so happy that you're continuing to serve. Um, we have another new member, um, old, old friend. I haven't seen her much lately, but Gwen Smith Ehrlich is uh, joining us now uh, for Chun. She is on the awesome. Chun board and uh, Peggy Randall has stepped off. And Gwen, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, thank you. Um, I am actually, I think, doing a joint involvement. So Peggy's not going to completely walk away. We're just, she's just going to be there in case I can't show up or that sort of thing. Um, I've been on the board of Chun, Capitol Hill United Neighborhoods for the last five years, um, doing quite a bit of work with community involvement and homelessness. And it's been uh, a unique journey. Um, we were under the leadership of Travis Leaker for many years and he is just, or he was just a dynamo in the community. So I learned a lot from him. And um, yeah, I've lived in Cherry Creek for over 20 some years. And so uh, Peggy twisted my arm, <laughs> but I'm glad to be uh, part of the committee. So thank you so much. Well, we're thrilled to have you. And, um, you know, Chen is a big voice and um, you obviously worked with them for a long time. And um, this is a great opportunity for us to share information and hopefully have a bigger footprint with the city. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, my okay. pleasure. Uh, Meredith, I know you're, if you can unmute, um, she, Meredith is now um, going to be appointed as one of the south, south of the creek. Um, I heard that. I, um, <laughs> I, I haven't spoken with, uh, Councilman Cashman, I, I was on the steering committee for over 20 years, starting in 1991, um, and then went off and then went back on. But I live in what's called Miller's Park, and I'm down the block from Allen, and always excited to hear. I, I kind of am just like attending and um, and excited about new opportunities, and especially I'm concerned about um the infrastructure to support all all of the development 
And um, so I, um, I had the opportunity to work on many of the design guidelines and reviews for the, both the shopping center and the west end of the shopping center, as well as uh, the neighborhood. So great stuff. Everybody being at the same table is real helpful. So, but I haven't heard anything from Paul or anything, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Meredith. Actually, Meredith is one of, the, one of the first people I met in the sort of community service world when I moved into Cherry Creek East in 1985. So, um, and always uh, has been a, an invaluable resource for all of those people who want to know some of the history. So anyway, welcome back on uh, Meredith. Brooks Waldman, a um, valued member, just reintroduce yourself, please, Brooks. Well, I'm, uh, my computer's in the hospital. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I guess I'm one of the old guys. Starting um, in the hilltop in 1968. Uh, and been a part of uh, sort of Cherry Creek for a long time. Uh, moved to Cherry Creek East um, over 20 years ago and um, really like it. I, I have my family here. I have my grandchildren downstairs that you may hear bumping around. And uh, I'm, like Meredith, very concerned about the infrastructure to support uh, the development that's proposed, uh, not to mention that, which has already been developed. And uh, would love to, to, to be around long enough to see, uh, uh, see it working for us and see uh, some kind of a, um, a mass transit system that, that serves Cherry Creek because we've been always called a, a destination or a, a development, a transit oriented development without the transit. And it's about <laughs> right. time, hoping to get it. So I'd like to be a part of that. Well, and Brooks has also worked on the Cherry Creek area plan, a number of the different committees that uh, I have served uh, on over time. So Brooks, thank you for signing up for another year. Appreciate it. Linda Barker from Cherry Creek North, you are next. Good evening, I'm Cherry Creek North's vice president. So I work hand in hand with Lou. My areas of focus on the board have been kind of zoning development, uh, our new website and our social media outreach and then all duties as assigned from Lou. <laughs> she is going to be taking over the reins as president of Cherry Creek North RNO in October. And um, so I have to make sure, you know, I, I want to put her in a bubble so nothing happens to her. <laughs> Linda, thank you for serving yet another year. Uh, yes. Susan Sweeney uh, for the Neighborhoods on the North. Hi, everyone. Um I've been just about everything one can be on this committee, uh, chair, vice chair, secretary, uh, property owner in Cherry Creek. Um, I started out as a neighborhood rep of Hilltop and then moved over to north of Cherry Creek. And I am also concerned with infrastructure and bike and pedestrian safety. And Susan, another one who has um, tremendous history and, in the area and watched and participated in its development. So Susan, thank you for agreeing to serve, even though you changed neighborhoods, we wouldn't let you go. <laughs> so I look forward um, to meeting our new Chun person. So maybe we can arrange that. You know, next month we are going to be in person. Thanks to Nick's um, offer to use their offices. So um, awesome. if, if not before, I hope we can all, um, uh, show up in person. So thank yeah. you, Susan. And thank you for doing it. some in, in person meetings, everybody. This is, it, that works much better for me. Yeah, great. Um, Bob, thank you for being here because no one else, none of the other members have uh, shown up from Country Club. So please unmoot yourself and, and, um, because you may be the longest 
serving, one of the longest serving, you, Nick, and some others. So that's kind of an awesome distinction, I suppose. But like Brooks and some of the others, I'm one of the old guys. Bought my first house in Cherry Creek North in 29, no, in uh, 69, 1969. One of the original members of the uh, founding member of the Cherry Creek Steering Committee. And I have also served on all of the master plans over the years. Primarily concerned, like all of us, with uh, with land use and infrastructure. And uh, I'm a board member, one of the original board members of the Country Club Historic District as well. So I've enjoyed the community engagement and all of the interesting people that I've met over the years. So I thank you for allowing me to continue on for one more stretch. Oh, thank you for doing it. And for those who don't know, uh, Bob is a very uh, well-respected and award-winning architect So, um, and developer in this area. Uh, and we're so happy that you've stayed on, Bob. So thank you. Bethany. Thank you. Hello, Bethany Gravel. Um, I missed the instructions, but I am uh, I'm a municipal government consultant. I do a lot of work with cities and counties, largely related to land use, but on all sorts of policy issues. And I became engaged because I was working with Nick through the Cherry Creek Business Alliance, which is now the Alliance. Um, and again, just trying to make sure that Cherry Creek has a more has a bigger voice in citywide politics, and we're at the table when big decisions get made. Great. And you are still the business alliance or the independent alliance that is a separate entity from the bid. So you yes. still wear that hat. Uh, well, no, no. I, I think we officially put Nick in charge, but I'm really happy to be his number two. <laughs> well, on this committee, he's, right. he, has a lot of, he has a lot of things yes. to do. He's uh, wears the hat for the bid. Oh, yeah, so. you're right. You're right. Yeah. I am the rep on the steering committee. You're right. You're right. And we're happy you're here again. So thank you. I, lo for that. I love being here. <laughs> okay. Annette, you're here. Thank you for being here. Let me unmute. Um, I have been on and off the steering committee um, over the years. I'm a longtime resident of Cherry Creek North. I've been on the board of Cherry Creek North for a long time. Currently, it's treasurer. And um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for serving again. Annette is, she um, is so smart and so fast um, on these issues and she never says no. So I guess I shouldn't tell everybody that, but she does so much work for us. And along with the rest of the Cherry Creek North, Linda, who created this amazing outreach, um, we've got a really good group. So I really uh, thank them for, helping on, on this committee as well as all the other stuff that they do. And I see Bill Allen is here. He joined us. Bill, we're just doing quick reintroductions. We have new members. So we're um, you've missed some of them, but you'll meet them next month and want you to introduce yourself to them. Uh, I live over on the Garfield Avenue bikeway, which uh, I worked on for some time with Barry uh, Lazarus. And it's being used more and more. It's a delight to have that in our neighborhood. And I'm hopeful that as they rebuild Colorado Boulevard, they will consider using the bikeway rather than building another bikeway on Colorado Boulevard. Uh, I've been here a little over 20 years. I'm retired and absolutely enjoying it. And uh, if you ever see an old green Porsche driving around the neighborhood, that's mine. And my happy <laughs> place is in the garage. It's wonderful to work with you. Thank you for your, thank you for your leadership, Lou. Well, thank you for signing up again. Um, have I missed any new or uh, other committee members who would like to introduce themselves? We do have. I sent out this um, updated roster. Um, we have um, Doug Hasayo and Rob Rooks who are new appointed by a country club, but they are not here tonight. Um, Jeremy shows up from the mall. He's very busy, obviously, but uh, occasionally he will join us and I will try to reach out to make sure that maybe next month we can all get together in person. Um, we do have, um, 
There are Cherry Creek businesses at large. And I know that Bill James reached out because he has a business here. Um, we've tried to engage some of the folks on the, the, on six because they really don't have much of a voice. They don't have, they're not within the bid. It would be great if they could be, but they're not. And so they really uh, don't have much of a voice. Voice We'd like to make sure since they're sort of in the middle of our our footprint here that we could get some of those people to participate. And then usually, or in the past, I think we have had some of the businesses in the bid, but uh, those are open. So uh, we can talk about it. We can talk to a councilwoman about uh, if she has any ideas. Um, Bill did offer to, um, to serve at a, as a business at large member. So, uh, so those have been highlighted. The Cherry Creek Triangle has been an open position uh, for some time. And it occurred to me that now that we have uh, the senior building open on um, Alameda and Colorado, Akoya, um, that they might be a really uh, great uh, member um, also running a business, but also having a lot of residents there that they, I'm sure, um, would like to make sure they can communicate with. So, so those are open. We will continue to work on making sure that, that our communication is good. Again, I record these. I upload these to the Cherry Creek North Neighborhood Association website on YouTube. So you can find past meetings there. And uh, with that, we will move on to our um, wonderful councilwoman and speaker for the evening, uh, Councilwoman Sawyer, who uh, I sent to everybody the survey. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at it and I'll turn it over to you, Councilwoman. Well, thank you. Um, hi guys, it's great to see everybody. It's been a little bit, a little while since I've been able to make it to one of these meetings. Um, I will start my updates with one piece of sad news, um, which is that Logan is going to be leaving our office. Um, so I know he is my fantastic senior aide. He's my right hand. He's been with me for five years. Um, Doug Friednash stole him. He is going to go uh, work for the lobbying team at Brownstein. So um, I'm very excited for him, but very sad for us. Um so he, his last day will be, I think, mid-March. Um, so that might mean, unfortunately, that for next month's steering committee meeting in person, we won't have an office representative there. It's spring break, and I'm taking my kids to Washington, D.C. to do the whole, like, capital tour thing that week. Um, so I, unfortunately, won't be able to be there, and we are going to be a man down in the office for a little while here. So um, I just wanted to let you all know that um, if you get a chance to email him a congratulations, you should. It is a fantastic opportunity for him, and I'm so excited for him. But like I said, very sad for us um, because he, is, he just does a fantastic job. So I um, wanted to let you guys all know that uh, things happening in the city um, that I want you all to know about. I think the most important one is that the Cherry Creek Denver Moves Cherry Creek plan is now officially um, released. It is in final form. Um, and so next step will be the conversation about implementation of some of the recommendations in there. I will say um, the biggest challenge for Denver Moves Cherry Creek implementation is going to be the funding. And um, that really kind of leads me to my next piece of news, which is to talk a little bit about um, our newcomers and the number of new residents we have in Denver. Um, as you all, I'm sure, have heard, we are doing some significant budget cuts down here at the city um, in order to address that challenge. Um, there's been a lot of kind of politics around it in terms of like sanctuary city things. And I will tell you, this has nothing to do with um, whether Denver is a sanctuary city or not, which it isn't. Uh, we are what we, Executive Order 142 says we are a welcoming city, um, which we are and which we want to be, but a welcoming city means welcoming within our resources. Um, unfortunately, Denver is the cheapest, quickest bus ticket from El Paso. And that is why we have been receiving so many um, buses full of migrants to our city. Um, and so our fiscal rules require, uh, uh, our charter requires a balanced budget. Our fiscal rules require 
um, that when our budget looks like it's going to be out of balance, we immediately start taking uh, and doing reductions in order to get our, our budget back into balance. Um, so that's what we've been doing down here. Um, uh, right now, the first two kind of service cuts are to the DMV and to our rec centers. Um, you know, none of us want to be in this position. We are in this position. I will say, um, you know, when we did our September, our budget in September of 2023 and had those conversations, we were housing about 500 migrants. We are now housing about 5,000. Um, in January, we received, um, I think 142 buses of people from Texas. Um, now we are down to, we just received one yesterday there. I think we've received, let me think about this for a second. We just got this update today. I want to say we received 26 in February. Um, so that's great news because that means we are getting a little bit of a breather. Um, there are, you know, significant amounts of um, people who have, we've been doing a lot of casework to move people out of our uh, shelter system and into stable housing. Um, you know, we need help. We need help from surrounding cities. We need help from the state. We need help from the federal government. We're not getting any help at this point, um, which is a real shame. And so um, we're taking steps to reduce our number of migrants. I think uh, today's number is about 2,500. So um, that's good. That means we've got less people to assist, less people to feed and um, shelter. And, um, you know, we're hoping that that means that we'll be able to stabilize a little bit and not do as many dramatic budget cuts as we were originally intending. Um, we, you know, the, that original scary number was 180 million. It looks like, uh, which is almost impossible to reach um, for us. It looks like now we'll be at maybe more like 120 million. Um, so, and hopefully we'll be able to reduce that number even further, but um, good news today in that we are at least, um, you know, reducing the the target number of those cuts significantly. Um, I will say about 73% of the city's general fund budget goes to staffing. And so, um, you know, $180 million, even in a in a one and a half billion dollar budget is a big number because what that means um, when you take out that kind of 73 percent, um, which is which goes to pay for staffing, um, that's a big chunk. So, um, you know, good news in that that number is reduced. Stay tuned um, as we kind of move forward. Unfortunately, we don't get any warning about when we're going to get buses or where they're going to go or how they're going to get dropped off. Um, and so what that means is that there's no no ability to prepare for it. Um, and so we're, you know, doing the best we can at this point with the little information we have. Um, I will say that it's an election year and this has become very political. And I just want to remind everyone that these are human beings. These are people and they have come from thousands and thousands of miles away through conditions we could never even imagine in our worst nightmares. Um, and so, you know, I ask for a little bit of grace for them, um, you know, as we try and put supports in place to help them. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Um, I feel like the great news I had for you um, about the uh, medians and that contract uh, that IGA finally getting through or MOU finally getting through, um, you guys already heard about. Um, and so Richard, I'm so happy that that is finally done. You guys have no idea how long that took. Richard has stuck oh. with this for a very long time. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. We're excited to be there doing it. <laughs> Well, we really appreciate your partnership in that, um, and I'm very excited to see, hopefully some of those dead trees will come out, um, <laughs> and, and we can, you know, bring it back to life in the way that it should be, in the way that it should have been maintained this entire time. So thank you for taking that on and for sticking with it for over a year to get it done. Um, it is officially done, so that's great. You're welcome. Um. And then I want to talk a little bit about our survey. So um, for those of you who haven't heard, and I hope you all have at this point, um, our office is working um, with community organizations and residents. We really want to hear from you all about service gaps in the Cherry Creek 
area. And by the Cherry Creek area, I mean the larger Cherry Creek statistical neighborhood. So this is Colorado Boulevard to University, and then basically the creek all the way up to Sixth Avenue, right? So it encompasses of encompasses the bid. It also encompasses Cherry Creek North, Cherry Creek East, Cherry Creek West, um, all of those different areas. And what we're trying to figure out is what's missing, right? We've got Denver Moves Cherry Creek. We know kind of the transportation needs that are out there. Um, but what we're missing is sort of the other pieces of it, right? In terms of, um, you know, is there lighting infrastructure that needs to be put in place? Do people feel safe when they're walking home at night, um, kind of up above north of the bid or east of the bid, um, southeast of the bid? So, those are the kinds of things that we're asking about um, and, and really just trying to identify where are our gaps? What do the residents who live in the Cherry Creek statistical neighborhood want to see um, and need to see? Now, much like the Denver Moose Cherry Creek plan, that doesn't mean that there's funding for it, right? But what we really would like to know is we can't even go out and ask for funding if we don't know um, what people wanna see so that we could price it out. Um, so this is kind of a first step in a larger conversation, um, but really appreciate you all um, sharing that with your networks, um, filling it out yourselves. Um, I, I will say, so we have a postcard that should arrive in, if you're a resident of anywhere in Cherry Creek, it should arrive in your mailbox um, relatively quickly here. They were mailed on Monday. Um, and then we also engaged a door knocking firm. So for um, anything kind of what we refer to as row home zoning or below, right? So if you're in a multi-unit building, we can't get in. And that means, um, you, you know, you're going to get the postcard and we hope that you take the survey. Um, for the residents whose doors are accessible um, to a door knocker, we have engaged a door knocking firm to flyer the neighborhood. And so they'll be doing a, a lit drop um, next week. So look for those um, you know, at your doors next week. It, it's it's all kind of the same um, picture of Cherry Creek uh, in, in the bid with the lights um, at night. And so that's kind of your flag of what we're looking at. There's a QR code, there's a link to the survey, um, but we would really love your help and assistance in sharing that with the broader community, reminding people to take it. The survey will close March 31st. Um, so you've got a little over a month here to um, give your feedback. And that will really help, I think, inform for our office and you all as the steering committee and the bid and um, the alliance and, you know, everyone else um, in, in, in the different neighborhood organizations, et cetera, to be able to really, um, um, I think, focus our conversation on what is missing and what our residents would like to see. So um, that's kind of the introduction to it and what's going on. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about anything that you've got going on at this moment, um, but really just, you know, it's great to reconnect with you all and check in and um, appreciate your help in sharing, spreading the word about the survey um, so we can try and get some of that really valuable information. So that's it for me. What do you got for me? One question that came up, and I think this is relevant since I sent this out to everybody. So there are neighborhoods that are um, adjacent to, but not within that, the Cherry Creek area who, um, you know, are concerned about some of the same issues. Um, Roberta, who has, is a, a, a prior Cherry Creek steering committee member and lives uh, south um, in uh, south of first. So we have neighbors south, but in order to complete those surveys, they're not in the statistical neighborhood. Can they can they complete the survey or do they at least say that they're in the neighborhood, not in the neighborhood? Yeah. So the first question of the survey is to identify what your relationship is with Cherry Creek. Right. And so you could be a resident, you could be a business owner, you could be a nearby um, resident who uses and shops and um, eats in Cherry Creek regularly. There's there's uh, a number of different kind of identifiers um, in terms of budget dollars and how to make sure that we got the word out to residents. We focus on the Cherry Creek statistical neighborhood because we're talking about your neighborhood. Right. 
Um, but that's why we're trying to kind of spread the word on a much broader basis. And that's why I'm kind of asking for your help in this, um, you know, Meredith, you can share to the South, um, uh, you know, if the bid can share with business owners, all of those different kinds of users of Cherry Creek, their, um, thoughts are important and valuable. Um, and so we really want to hear from everybody, but, um, in terms of budget dollars, it, we don't have the budget dollars to to do that for, I think we're flyering like 1800 houses. Um, so, you know, and then mailed to over 3000, I think it was over 6,000, um, that we mailed to. So, um, you know, we're trying to, with the sort of, um, outside of Cherry Creek users who either come to Cherry Creek to use the space, the businesses, the restaurants, et cetera, the mall, or, um, you know, the schools, um, or any of those kinds of things, we're trying to reach them via social media, via, you know, word of mouth, um, RNOs, those kinds of things. So, um, Roberta, I hope that answers your question. And, and you know, there are um, a, a, a number of issues that are going to be coming up. And again, I think that... Um, there, there have been a couple of different emails about the um, Denver moves because traffic has been and uh, infrastructure is a part of that. Um, that I will send. There was an original email, but I think I, I got one that is a better, easier link. So I will send that to the committee. I also want to tell you all that if we can, you know, help Councilwoman Sawyer get this out, get this information so that it really provides data. Um, we are still uh, participating, several of us um, are participating in uh, Stuart Anderson, who could not be here tonight, and I have been working on the, um, the RTD bus rapid transit planning for Colorado Boulevard. And we will try to keep this group updated on the specifics. So I went to a meeting two weeks ago on that, and it was it was in some respects um, visioning, um, pretty layperson friendly. Um, they showed pictures from different cities of corridors where there were different options for um, BRT, including center, median kind of loading areas. On the side, there were conversations, as Bill pointed out earlier, about whether there should be a bike path. But then um, Michael Hughes and several other people said, but we have this great Garfield bikeway that we just invested all this money in. So that's a lot safer. And we, you know, frankly, we don't have the real estate on Colorado. So these are real specific discussions about how you implement BRT, and it's going to be critical um, as we look into the future, as Brooks pointed out, when we're a neighborhood without good transit, well, um, we've got to address the transit at some point in time. Once we're on that, uh, once we get into that queue, we're going to have to think about what does that look like? And Colorado Boulevard is going to be an opportunity for us to really watch what they're talking about and what are the options in the different um, different areas of Colorado Boulevard. The north area is probably very different from coming through Cherry Creek and Hilltop and what that looks like. And so it's going to be, um, but it's here. You know, we're looking at BRT and other parts, First Avenue, Alameda, et cetera sometime in the future, but the, you know, the toolbox only has so many options in it and they are going to be looking at those options on Colorado. So to the extent that I can, and I know Stuart will, we will bring that information here. There is also uh, the road ahead, uh, the date for which uh, Barbara Metzger, do you have that date handy? Cause I didn't, I don't. Um, I can look at there too. Give me one sec. But there, uh, the road ahead is um, a program that is put on by Transportation Solutions, and it is all about VRT. And okay. they are having, 
It's Thursday, April 25th. Okay, thank you. Um, I know that uh, people who are interested in this um, can go to that event. It is open to the public. I don't know, there's probably a restricted number of tickets. Um, so please, it, I will also send that information out to the steering committee. Um, as a board member of Transportation Solutions, I have uh, sponsored um, the event because I think it's going to be critical. And to the extent that we can, and I think, thanks to Amy Kara, I think East West Partners is also um, a, larger than I am, but a sponsor of the event. So Amy, thank you for that. Because Absolutely. that is our future. And, um, and it, and I'm sure East West Partners is thinking about that and talking to the city about it as they plan their project. But we have to be aware that this is coming. And the development now has to uh, anticipate that it is coming. So um, if we're going to get real value out of the planning process, we can look at what's happening on Colorado and we can look at what tools they have in the toolbox and what works for this type of area. So um, I I don't know if uh, Councilwoman or uh, Amy uh, wanna say anything about uh, that process, but it's something that we ought to keep in front of this committee. Yeah, I will just, I agree. It's very, very important. I will say um, there are a lot of hands in the pot when it comes to BRT in the Denver area, right? There, um, are, there's the state of Colorado, which is running the Colorado Boulevard um, BRT. The city is running the Colfax um, BRT. That's going to be shovels in the ground um, by the end of this year. Um, the Dr. Cog is running the Alameda corridor study. Um, so there are, I would say on the state level, there are two BRT lines that they are looking at implementing as quickly as possible, Federal Boulevard and Colorado Boulevard. Um, so this uh, this initial Colorado Boulevard um, conversation is really sort of, um, you know, laying out and getting some feedback um, from, you know, stakeholders about what um, the really, the bigger picture sure should look like. Um, and then I believe, as I understand it, there will be a kind of a second process. And in that process, that will really be more of a public process. Um, but this is this is my second BRT line um, because I have been working on the East Colfax one um, since I came into office in 2019. And um, it has been a real um, pleasure to learn about. I think, you know, the neighbors hate it. They hate it. I'm um, going to be very honest there, but it's got to come. We have to do something about moving more people in less space. And we do not have the funding for something like trains. So the answer um, for us right now is bus rapid transit uh, on those main corridor lines. And um, I will say my one concern is that um, is the first and last mile issue. So having those stops along the uh, transit corridors, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but then how do we get people into the neighborhoods from there? And that is something that I'm not hearing enough conversation about. It's something I've been trying to kind of bring up and make sure we're um, having more conversation about. Um, I know Amy can probably speak to that a little bit um, as well, because I know you've been having those conversations too a little bit. Um, but I will say that's kind of my one concern is that, um, you know, you, like I live, um, I'm sure most of, you know, uh, in Hilltop, um, over off of fourth and for me to get to the Colfax bus rapid transit line, there's no way I'm going to do it. I'm not going to walk there. Um, you know, I'm not going to get in my car and drive there. If I'm going to get in my car and drive, I'm just going to drive down there. So that first and last mile issue, it's real, it's big, um, because we've got to provide the infrastructure um, along the corridor. And I don't know if that is bikes. I don't know if that is something that has never even been invented yet, but is coming down the pipeline, <laughs> pipeline right? Um, but um, something to connect people to that BRT, um, you know, those BRT stops along those corridors. So um, 
I went on the DDP trip to Mexico City a couple of years ago. And for them, it is bikes. They have an amazing system where they have like just racks and racks and racks of bikes that you can, um, you know, take off the rack and drive to another location. And then they've got racks and racks and racks of bikes in the neighborhoods um, to park those bikes in as well. So it's a very interesting system. It works really, really well. Um, but I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot that is not a piece of the conversation that is being discussed. It's more, um, kind of the, the specifics around like, well, where would stops go? And, um, you know, what, where do we want to see things and is, should it be center running or should it be side running? And, um, and all of those are really important conversations, but we do need to remember that in order to get people to use it, they have to get to it. Um, and that's something Thing I'm not hearing enough about. So I will just say that's a flag concern of mine. Yeah, that's um that that's well said. I think there are some other options. I think I will ask Stuart to see if he can um make sure that on that agenda for uh the road ahead presentation that perhaps they really talk about how that works. And, you know, so often Denver talks about peer cities and um, peer cities like Minneapolis, how do they deal with the downtown, which is why I think they chose a speaker who has worked in that environment. Um, but you're absolutely right. And I know that, um, you know, we have talked before about little, you know, mini commuters and uh, we've had um, almost golf cart type situations in the past. And people said, oh, we tried that. And, you know, that's doesn't mean we can't look at a better option for something like that. So um, well said. I will just say there was a question uh, from Meredith. Logan's information, if everyone, anybody wants to send him a note, is logan.fry, F-R-Y, at denvergov.org to send him well wishes uh, before he leaves to go um, make probably a lot more money. <laughs> so um, let's see. Um, so Bill, I think the question that Bill raised in the chat is, has there been research done on bus and BRT experiences on how to improve the overall bus experience to get people there? And the answer is yes. And we all know that during COVID, um, we had a, we lost a lot of uh, people who go downtown regularly. Um, and the domino effect of that, frankly, was that we really saw deterioration in quality of bus services. I know that um, when I was practicing law downtown in a large firm, we bought everybody uh, eco passes. And um, I've had several people say, yeah, they don't, they used to do that too for the, for the larger businesses downtown, but they don't do it anymore because people weren't feeling safe. They weren't coming in enough on a regular basis to downtown offices to make it make sense anymore. So there are so many factors that go into what, how there was a deterioration of the service. And the question now is, how do you change it up and really think differently about transit. Um, so stay tuned. I think this it probably is at the heart based on what some of you have said, like Brooks and Bob and others about the, the infrastructure and the questions about how we continue with this pace of development in this little jewel of Cherry Creek and, um, and still maintain quality of life and the ability to get where we need to go. So it's a big conversation, but I think that, that that we have to start talking about it more and thinking about it more broadly. And I think Councilwoman Sawyer is right. There are a lot of people who are not going to like it. And we need to look at how it impacts zoning. I know, Bill, that was a concern of yours uh, from time to time. So uh, this has to be a conversation that we have now. It's not going to happen for a while. And for the budget reasons that Councilwoman Sawyer raised. It's, it may be a long way off, but some of these are funded differently than just city budget. So um, let's, let's continue to try and let's continue to learn. Councilwoman. 
Can I just jump in there, Lou? I will say um, the way the governor budgets at the state is a little bit different um, than certainly what we do here at the city. Obviously, it's a different it's a different budget. Um, but this is a priority of the governor's. And one of the things that he does when he presents his budget is actually set aside money for his priorities. So, um, you know, we've all heard there's like $23 million at the state for any anyone who wants to pass a bill to take a look at. That's kind of the money that's up for grabs. That decision will be made by the Joint Budget Committee um, at the state level, the JBC. But I will say that there, um, you know, the, the funding challenges that like the city of Denver might have um, does it's different at the state because of the way the governor does his budgets. So, um, you know, the federal boulevard and Colorado Boulevard um, priorities have been set and there are, um, you know, dollars associated with that. Now, is there dollars for a full BRT build out? I don't know. Um, like I said, that's a state level conversation, but um, there certainly are, uh, it is certainly a priority of the governors to get these these two lines done. And we all know that um, you've got front range tra um, train Passenger service <laughs> coming at some point. They're looking at it now. I don't know how it's gonna be funded, but um, we can have presentations on that. Um, there are a lot of options when we start thinking about how to get information to you all to take back to your neighborhoods and how to come together with concerns about some of those so that we can actually share and use our combined voice for perhaps some change. Um, so, you know, stand by, let me know if you've got ideas, let Councilwoman Sawyer know and take the survey and put some ideas right in there. Um, one thing in the chat, Meredith noted that maybe um, Glendale uh, Dottie folks might want to participate in the survey. I yeah. do know that. Can I, um, can I just respond to that if you? Yeah. Um, so I will say the Denver Moves Cherry Creek plan is done. And that really addresses the transportation piece of this. And the, the Denver Moves Cherry Creek um, project team did connect with Glendale's version of Dottie. Um, I think at their public works um, in order to have those conversations. While this survey um, does ask a little bit about traffic, um, you, you know, as some of the identifiers and rankings of priorities, what we re we really have a great, clear idea of how the residents of Cherry Creek and surrounding areas feel about the traffic challenges that are happening there. That's not really what we are looking for in this survey. It's more about the other quality of life things that are missing that were not addressed in the Denver Moves Cherry Creek process. Things like lighting, things like parks, things like bridges, things like vegetation, things like community safety. Um, all of those are really the kinds of things that we're looking for. Um, and you'll see that when you take the survey and you see the kinds of questions that we're asking, because we've already done a community process when it comes to the transportation piece of the surrounding Cherry Creek area. And so um, that's great. But what the city hasn't invested in is all of those other quality of life issues. And that's what we're really trying to kind of um, pin down with this survey. So thanks for letting me jump in on that, Lou. No, thanks for that clarification. I appreciate it. And just so everyone knows, Glendale um, is involved in, with transportation solutions um, and they are involved in the discussion about Colorado Boulevard BRT because that's adjacent to Glendale as well. So um, just so you know, they, they are at the table. And uh, with that, I'm going to open it up and see if anybody would like to provide any updates. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot, but does anyone have anything else they'd like to uh, to bring up this evening? Bob? Lou, uh, is there a link, Amanda, to your uh, survey? Our neighborhood falls outside the Cherry Creek statistical area, but we're as impacted as Cherry Creek North or Cherry Creek East because of our proximity. It's so in the are... invite for this meeting, Bob, but I'll be oh, happy to send it to you again. Thank you. If you, just, if you I look will go the email. pick it up and put it in the chat if I can find it quickly, too. Thank you. Okay, with that, if nobody else has anything they'd like to jump in on, uh, we'll wrap it up. It's a little after six, so 
everyone has a longer evening. Um, Annette. I, you know, I came late to the meeting and I apologize for that, but I had asked a question about quality Italians, little structure in front. Do we have any update on that? Yeah, we did get an update on that, Annette. And basically today is the day that they're going to have to um, apply for that. And Richard is dogging the issue and he will let us know and we will update anybody to, in the next day or so. Okay, thanks so much. Again, sorry if it was a repeat. No, no problem. Uh, uh, Meredith. Um, I don't know. I, I assume most people got the information about um, the sidewalk fees. And the, I believe that unfortunately the opportunity to email back um, Jill was yesterday. Feel about the sidewalk tax. And I don't know if anybody's following it. I mean, they're looking at $150 per, per unit or $30 per unit in density. And, um, so it might be a, a good opportunity. I, I will just say this outright. Um, having lived in density my whole life, I feel like if anything, density is what supports mass transit. Um, if you ask Bill James, he'll say that it's density that actually the property taxes actually pay for themselves because of fire and and um, police, you know, you, you don't have as much urban sprawl. We're part of the solution. And some of these numbers are, are pretty amazing. I, I would think that Chris Hines, he, ha he has the densest units um, in, in Denver. And um, so it, it's one of those things where we should try to get it right before we start putting in the taxes. So I'm just suggesting, sorry, Councilwoman Sawyer. <laughs> I'm just trying to get people to give feedback because we should think this through before we start imposing lots of, you know, when we should um, making sure it's not disproportionately impacting part of the solution. And um, all I can say is, my building would pay like 30, close to $4,000 a year for sidewalks. And while we might use the sidewalks more, we're also the ones that are making transit a viable option. So I think that there's a disconnect. That's my editorial. I'm gonna ask if Councilwoman wants to say anything and then we'll go to Annette. No, I think that's right. Um, just to kind of catch everyone up, and I just put the survey link in the chat so you guys can all get it there. Um, uh, I will say that I was not a, one of the council members on the sidewalk um, steering committee. It was council member Cashman and um, council member Flynn. And so um, the sidewalk fee that was voted on by the voters um, was unimplementable the way it was written originally, which is why they went back to take a look at it. Um, and there were two kind of big issues that they were looking at. First was, um, change, you know, changing the ordinance to make sure that it is implementable. And second, changing the fee structure to make sure that it is equitable. Um, those conversations have, um, have led to this community survey that closed, which is why I didn't mention it because it's there's there's not an opportunity to give feedback on the survey anymore. Um, but the the committee will now go back and take a look at all of that feedback that they received, and then they'll make recommendations to city council because city council will have to vote on any changes. And I will say, because it was voted on by the voters, ten council members will have to agree to support something in order to um, move it forward by by charter. So just wanted to add that in there. Thank you. Um, Annette? So I, I think maybe um, Councilwoman Sawyer answered my question, but I've been wondering since this was something that was voted on by the taxpayer and part of the vote was the fee structure was included in that um, ballot initiative, how the council can just go back and change what the fee structure is without going back to a vote of the people. So 
Um, yeah, but. I'm happy to happy to answer that. Um, so the way the Taxpayer Bill of Rights reads in the state constitution, um, a citizen initiated ordinance like this one um, is considered the law. And then um, for the first six months after a citizen's initiated ordinance is voted on, that no changes are allowed to be made. After that, changes can be made to it, but requires a supermajority of council. That's why 10 council members um, would need to agree on the changes. Um, there were a couple of things that made the sidewalk initiative unimplementable, including the fact that we don't have enough sidewalk contractors or cement to get it done. Um, the purpose of the fee structure, as stated by the citizens group that that put it forward was to um, tax residents on their property taxes and then um, allow the city to bond against that money in order to um, build out those sidewalks at a faster pace, right? Because if we collect $150 from each um, you know, resident of Denver a year in, on, on their property taxes to put towards sidewalks, by the time we saved up enough money to put in all the sidewalks, we just wouldn't, it would take forever. It would take 30 years. Um, so the, the purpose of the fee structure was to set up specific amount of money to bond against for the city to bond against, to get it, get it done. Um, after the vote, um, what became clear is that that structure really isn't equitable, um, particularly for, um, units, corner units where there's two sides that they have to pay for sidewalks. We have people who just put in brand new sidewalks, um, you know, at eight, 10, $15,000. And so, for them to then pay, um, you know, as a concern, there were a lot of different concerns with it, which is so we as a council have the legal right to go back and take a look at it and make those changes as long as a super majority of council agrees on those changes. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. That was a great explanation. I learned a lot. So um, with that, I don't see anyone else having a comment or hand up. It's uh, 6.08, and we'll go ahead and adjourn. Uh, Councilwoman, thank Wait, you again I, I, very I, much. I did send a comment. My question was, how, is, how does this apply to commercial, and how does it apply to CMX, which is a blend of commercial, possibly, and units? Do they have like a, another way of calculating it? Because I've only seen the calculation for, for residential. Yeah, there aren't any final recommendations yet. And like I said, I'm not one of the council members who sits on that board. So I don't know the specifics um, because I'm not sure that there are specifics yet. That's really why they were putting out the survey to kind of float um, and socialize the idea of a proposed fix and see what people thought about it. I'm sorry, but I don't have that information. But when, the survey when this comes out, we'll follow up, Meredith, and we'll try to get somebody to come and present on that. Great. Thanks. Okay, so um, again, we'll adjourn and thank you and Councilwoman have a wonderful trip for the rest of you. Uh, I hope to see you in person next month at uh, the bid office and I'll send reminders about that. I'll try to send some updates, the information I get from Richard. Um, Bob, if, if you uh, need me to resend uh, some information on the survey and of course the information on Cherry Creek Moves. So with that, good night, everyone. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. Hi, Lou. Good night, all.